deal, y'all. This is the interview podcast. Another special guest here, my boy Malk. Malk up next. Y'all might have seen him on the gram with that little blue check. They seen it. He had the blue check before the before <laughs> all the paying for blue checks and all that. He didn't just get that. He been verified. He been legit. If you don't know about him, now is the time to know. This is the Brody now. You feel me? We locked in. We had some good conversations, and we just here and we really like blessed to even have this conversation and definitely thankful nice. that we can share this good information. We're nice. going to talk about the industry, we're going to talk about music, we're going to talk about his growth, going viral, everything. So no get, introduce yourself again and um, appreciate you for man, doing this for man, sure. Khalil, Khalil, man. I'm now tapped in with the interview, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. My dog, yeah, I go by the name of Malcolm, man. I'm an R&B artist. Um, I wouldn't even put myself in a box of that. I'm just... You know, just the artist really just trying to get at it, man. But I appreciate what you're doing, man. Thanks Definitely. for having me on. Definitely. Um, yeah. Like you said, he's not in that category, I say, because, you know, a lot of people are saying, now R&B is dead. Like, R&B <laughs> is gone. Like, we need some yeah. folks to really come in, you yeah. know, revive it. So we can touch right into that. Like, how do you plan to, you know, keep pushing that R&B sound or just a different wave other than just the typical rap now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, man, you know, I grew up listening to old school R&B. I got an old soul, so I was listening to artists like Stevie, like, you know, early Usher, and just all type of old old school stuff, Marvin Gaye, growing up in the crib. So you, I always had to appreciate you dancing like Usher, too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't okay, dance. Okay. I'm going to be real. But uh, just, you know, that gave me an appreciation for the soul part. And when I got to high school, I fell in love with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I had some, a few friends introduced me to, you know, what hip hop was. I, to be honest, I was a church boy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I still, you know, I still love the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still love the Lord, but I used to, you know, only do church, only do theater. Choir. You know, I, yeah, choir. Mm-hmm. You know, that was my upbringing. That's who I was. And um, once I got introduced to hip hop, I'm like, oh, what's this? So this, you, this a little different. So you're saying middle school, you didn't listen to hip-hop at all? Not really. Like, just the radio? I mean, yeah. Like, I knew all, all the big popular songs, okay, but okay. I wasn't tapped in. Like, who dropping on Friday? Mm, or definitely. Drake dropping. You know, mm. like, I wasn't... I was like, nah, I'm cool. Facts. But once I got into hip-hop, um, it definitely changed my life. I fell in love with 808s. I fell in love with different flows. And I was like, man, how can I sing this, though? Mm. So once I once I I started exploring that side, and that's how I, I had the skills to do both, and that's really what I'm trying to do in my music right now. I definitely want to have them records that definitely you know, you know, I'm really giving the vocals to the women, and then you know, or just to everybody that's listening, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> I want those records that are like, oh, this dude, I could be He's bumping selling. this in the whip, like I could be nodding my head faster, you know what I'm saying? So. So you, good balance. You were saying like, of course, how to R&B for the ladies, but also you might be on some tracks with some rappers and you want that definitely. hook to like change the vibe of the song. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So who are some of the artists you worked with and look forward to working to? Working um, with? T- to be honest, I haven't done, I haven't done any features in my whole career. Like, I, I'm, I've never done it before because I always was like, I don't even want to do a feature till I could really get a feature from the person that I really want. It means something. And most of the time, that person wouldn't really benefit from me being on there, but I would benefit from them. So I wanted to make make sure I was lit enough to the point to where, oh yeah, now it's time, you mm-hmm. know, so. Yeah, but I mean, I, I definitely want to work with, um, on the rap side, I, I think I, I work good with Future, you know what I'm saying? I feel like me and Future come up with something crazy. Toxic, hey. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Might have but, a toxic, but, the, the toxic, but but that's just that's just my favorite rapper though. I okay, think okay. I think he got he got good balance. Drake, of course, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. And I'm definitely aiming for the stars, but I feel like I definitely see it happening. Uh, Usher, my favorite R&B artist of all the time. Um, I like Tank. Um, there's some new young talented dudes out here too. You know, Brent Givion. I rock with their mm-hmm. music as well. I rock with Brent um, for sure, and definitely on the ladies. Her, you know what I'm saying. Her is fire. Sleeping. And, yeah, and I met her um, at BET and like. I think it was like 2019 or something like that. I had the chance to go to the BET Awards, and I met her, and she just so down to earth for her music, so so good. So I, I would let her work with her. That's cool. You think Drake is the goat? Do I think Drake is the goat? Yeah. Um. 
I mean, I don't know. That, that's a tough. That's a tough, tough thing. We have to see in about ten years. So Drake or Future? Erase one all the time. Drake or Future? Like one whole music catalog gone. I would say we got to keep Drake, only because his versatility. Future more just trap. Future do future. He he's trap. He got a few cool pop records, a few cool. But Drake got the R and B records. He got the big pop records, and he got the rap records. He got so some you, you overseas records too. Overseas records, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you can't delete his catalog. You got a legendary catalog. Okay. So growing up in um, Cleveland, right? Yep. Um, starting out, you said you was a church boy. You yep, was yep. Um, singing. How was that in school, like, the culture, like, you know, being the dude to sing? Because I know you was known for, like, uh, he the dude to be singing yeah. and stuff. So oh, yeah. How yeah. was that culture? No, it was crazy. I mean, when I first came to high school, to be honest, I want to say I was a lame, but I didn't know nobody. And I really didn't care to be known or I wasn't really on social media or none of that. But I had a homie by the name of Bizak. Um, he didn't do that beatbox in my videos. Yeah, yeah. Bees at He's dang their beatbox like it's a, <laughs> a, a real production. Like, I'm like, yeah. they got to be playing something behind the camera. Yeah, so. yeah, no, no. So, Bees, Bees was a junior when I came in as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Bees, at, we actually had did a play. Because I told you I was in theater, too. So, we had did a play when I was in, we was in fifth grade. I was in fifth grade. I think he was a little older. And we was in the Wiz. And I was the... I think I was the lion, Bizak was the scarecrow. And we met as kids. So when I came to high school, he was already a popular nigga. Like, he was already that nigga in the mm, school. Right. So I'm like, man. Ninth grade, or and, he was in 10th? Well, he, he was in 11th, okay, I think, okay. and I was a freshman. So once once I came to, uh, to high school, Bees was like, he introduced me like, hey, this is my young, this is my young, yeah. he could sing, he could sing. He even tell girls like, oh, he could sing, like, yeah. sing some. So you got the little clout a little bit. So right? a little bit. And then, you know, one day, well, we used to always be in the lunchroom. That was our thing. Like, it was me and a few of our other homies, uh, Blase, they, um, they used to um, dance, beatbox. Like, it was just like a talented group of, group of friends. And we used to be at the cafeteria, like the movies, like they make movies about this, but this is real life. This is my <laughs> life. Like they used to be beatboxing and rapping and singing, like just all at the table. And people knew us for that. Mm. But one day this girl recorded. Yep. She, she, she recorded me. I don't know what made me think of this, but I, I did like a, a version of I'm in love with the Coco by OT Genesis. And that is, it's, and I, it's so crazy. Keep going. Keep and, going. And I'm just, you know, I'm just a young kid. You know what I'm saying? I got my, I'm wearing, I don't think, I think I'm wearing a scarf, a button down. Glasses. I'm wearing anything, like glasses. And, you know, I did a rendition of it. And, man, I kid you not, the video was about a week old. But it's, she posted it a week later. Um, one of my friends posted the video a week later. And it went super viral on Twitter. And I was wondering, I didn't even have a Twitter. <laughs> like, niggas calling me like, Ma, download Twitter. You going no. viral on Twitter? I'm like, man, nigga, I don't care about that. Like, this is me. Yeah. I might never care like, yeah. to, to, to have that. But I'm like, that's how I know that it's meant. Because I'm like, there's no way that that happened. So I get on Twitter. I'm looking. I'm like, oh, this is going up for real. I woke up like the next morning. I think, man, it was like. A bunch of crazy people was liking the tweets, like celebrities, everything. It was going crazy. Like, so from that moment on, it's kind of where my career started. Yeah, I'm going to put the video like right here. I know y'all remember the video because it's funny. I think when that came out, I was I was younger Yeah. in middle school. And I think it was like, they was, I, it may have been Twitter, but I could have sworn it was fine. But... I mean, oh no, like, they put it on Vine. Okay. Everywhere that video went, it okay. was gone. I so think it depends on where you saw it. I yeah. think like, but I, I remember it though. I'm in love with the Coco. Like yeah. yeah. So um yeah. so when that happened, what was your like next steps? Cause you just got all this attraction and now it's like, well, what should I do in this moment? So I went from a nigga that nobody knew to being the most popular nigga in high school, period. So that's, that was like within like a week. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that happened. That was kind of crazy. All the girls that went on me, you know, they, they start coming. You know how that is? Yeah. I mean, that's just how it is. Was you turning them but, down? Or? Uh, yeah, I was, to be honest. I didn't even have... I mean, <laughs> you know, of course I was enjoying <laughs> it. But I, but I didn't... I wasn't in a rush to, like, get into nothing serious because it was too much. Like, I kid you not, like, even my mama, she had a panic attack one night in the middle of the night from all of this shit happening because her friends was like, Russell Simmons just posted Malk on Facebook. Like, it was unlike anything, so my family didn't really know how to react because at first my mom, she was like, man, little dude, you ain't doing nothing because she liked to, like, she believed in me, of course, but she, but she didn't think nothing like that could happen mm-hmm. to her son. So she was tripping. But after that, labels were reaching out. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was it, it was an interesting situation. Um, my, my dad took on the role of managing me during that time. He didn't really know much about the music industry. But, you know, he stepped up because that's just what a father's supposed to do in a situation. Because there was a lot of folks trying to leech on to me. And mind you, I'm only 14, 15. So I don't, I don't. I'm still a kid at the end of the day. As much as I feel like I can handle myself on my own, kid. when you're 14, 15, 16, your mind 17, not quite, kid. exactly, your mind not quite as developed, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it was almost to the point to where, like, record execs literally pulled up to the school. Like, I kid you not, one time a record exec came and pulled me out of my class, my last class of the day, and was like, meet me in the cafeteria. And I don't know who allowed him to do that. Like, my dad was pissed, you know what I'm saying? But, like, somebody allowed him in the school to do that, pull me out of class. What was he talking about? He's like, you know, the next black Justin Bieber. Like, I need, like, it, it was crazy. Like, so I experienced that. Black Justin Bieber is yeah. crazy. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. That was offensive to you, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. Of course. You know what I'm saying? But the first thing they do is compare you until you're the one that's being compared to. You know what I'm saying? So... It's like that. That's all it. That's what it was for me. Um, so they start hitting up your pages and oh, yeah. and all that. Yeah. And they all saying the same thing. Everything, yeah. So you know, um, my parents and uh, and I, we kind of we came down to Atlanta and we kind of made a decision. I um, ended up signing a big boy from Outcast. Um, I was with him for about about four years. So. Working with the Dungeon family and everybody else, it was a it was a good experience. But um, I had uh, became independent my sophomore year, so really that's that's sophomore year of college. Yeah, my sophomore year of college. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just so. making sure on the timeline. So okay. when you were with Big Boy, you were in those rooms with like multiple. Oh yeah, no, it was crazy. Like, yeah. Network was crazy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So how was that for you being young in that network? Like, what what was those things you were doing? Because you were like by yourself. Like you didn't have like it wasn't a duo. Like ah, me and my man started rapping. It's like it's you. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, so it was interesting because you know, Bzac kind of did the videos with me. You know, I I have other people in the videos with me. So I just um. It was unique, like, kind of trying to step into this. Like, I was always, a, I guess, a solo artist, but me and him still did the videos together. So, you know, me learning how to be in a studio and just, you know, just really what it is to be an artist and really see the industry from the inside instead of, you know, from the outside looking in. It was a complete different view, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like... Being in Atlanta, being with a lot of the OGs, meeting a lot of the OGs, like Big, they introduced me to Tip, and just uh, anybody that's, you know, real influential in Atlanta on the music side. Um, it, it was, I'm grateful for that. I was grateful for the opportunity, so. That was viral everywhere. Like that's it, what I'm saying. It really was. Like, I literally, bro, I literally tried to get Clark, they said it would have been unfair, but I performed at at all of Clark's homecomings. So I'd open for Baby my freshman year. I opened for the Baby. I opened for... What you at the one last year? Gun in him, yes. Gun in him. That and, one was... and then I just opened for the Herb shit. So I'd open... I didn't do it four years of that shit. So it was like... One year, I tried to see if... They was talking about having something on the screen before your mm. performance. I was like, shit, play my video before the screen. Everybody gonna know who I am. Mm. Before I even get on stage. They wasn't gonna do it. They said... It wouldn't be fair. Fair to what? 
Exactly. <laughs> better, Clark better is weird. They, they say that's going to make me just seem like I'm not. Like, they kind of wanted to just make me seem like I was just a regular student artist. And that's what I don't like about Clark. Like, people like us, the superstars, we are superstars. So it's like. Let them. Like, let, let, it, let them be. be. Yeah. Don't try to. Yeah, like, let them shine. Yeah, yeah, let them shine. Yeah. Especially, it's a day. Homecoming yeah. is. And the crazy part is, is if you're going to shine, man, that shit going to come through. If you're going to connect and shine, you're going to shine flat out. Okay. Like, there's nothing that can stop that. But no, you, you mentioned that your father stepped up and played that big role in management. Right. So I noticed one thing about you, like, you carry yourself in a very mature way, a very, like, I know what I'm, not even I know what I'm doing, but, like, I know where I'm going. I know how to move and... I want to know where did you get that from and how important it is to just know yourself and know your value, know your worth, and just carry yourself that certain way to attract others. Well, it, it definitely started in the household. Um, I grew up with my, my mom and my pops in the house, very present in my life. Um, my aunties, my, my grandfather uh, who passed away, you know, they just always prided me upon what well, they always prided themselves upon just integrity and just being, you know, the best version of yourself and, and just really always articulating how you feel properly and respectfully, always, you know, being optimistic and trusting God. Like, these are just some of the principles that I just follow. So just all of that kind of led to the maturity. And also, I'm just an old soul. <laughs> like... Something about me, people always, like, ever since I was 10 years old, they're like, I feel like you've just been here before. Mm. They used to say that to me when I was about 8 to 10. They, like, and they used to call me granddad. Like, some of my friends still, you know what I'm saying, call me old man and stuff like that because I like to come with the wisdom and stuff like that. But it's only because of things I've been taught. And I'm still learning 100%. Every day I'm learning. And I just, I like to soak in a lot of knowledge. So maybe that's what it is. I'm a student. I'm such a student of everything. Um... And I like to even spread some of the good knowledge that I know. So, Okay. So, being young in the industry, you've been in there for a longer time now. How has, like, um, the transition been from when you first got in and there's a lot of chaos going on, and then now looking back at it? So, for example, if it was another kid in your shoe, mm -hmm. what would you tell him if... You know, that fame came quick, and he don't know if he should go get 100 girls, he should go to the mall, he should go sign immediately, he should go. I would say, I would say where, where the industry at right now, see, it was different back then. When you went viral, the only reason why a lot of people know me from that video is because going viral back then was a little different. The internet was different, like. Oh, now everything is algorithms. It's not as natural. Like back then, it was natural. So if you went viral, it was like everybody seeing your stuff. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody at um, Instagram headquarters like, oh, we gonna shut off uh, fifteen percent of his followers over here to not see this. Uh, Twenty, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's completely different now. So I mean, I would say just build as much leverage as you can, because the more leverage, the more power. If you already have some going, you can make get a better deal. Or you know, if you already have something going, you could stay independent. I mean, you know, people like Chance the Rapper, they did do, you know, distribution deals. Cause sometimes we don't know how to put ourselves on festivals and stuff like that. Sometimes you need a little machine, which is cool. But on the other end, the more leverage, the easier it is. So, you know, like right now, even for myself, I'm just trying to build back up, you know, my buzz, trying to create and kind of rebrand myself. Like, because I would even compare myself to, you know, somebody like her. Like her, she was a childhood star, too. Like, she was on a show. She was viral and stuff like that. And she came back. That's when she was Gabby. And then when she came back as her, I'm probably not going to change my name. But when she came back as her... She didn't show her face. She was like, I just want y'all to know this music. I want y'all to know who I am. Yeah, and she still so blow up, and now she show her face now. Because yeah. it don't matter. She Before been, you couldn't find nothing. You, nothing. But she was like, she called. Mm. So it's like, 
you know, I would just say, you know, if 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 somebody else was in this predic in that predicament, just build that leverage. That's power. Power for real. That's big. That's huge, actually. Um, what keeps you going though? Like, what's what's in you that force you to get up? You know, even I don't know if y'all can tell, but he really be hitting the gym. Like, <laughs> he be on some Creed workouts, Mike Tyson workouts. So like, what what's What's that drive in you? Where does that come from where you just want to overachieve and almost it may seem like anything? I want to win, man. Uh, I definitely want to. I want to change my life. I want to change my family's life. But I just feel like I need, I have a story to tell. I want to be, you know, the underdog that made it out. Like, dang, I, I, like I knew he had it. He always had it. But now he did it. Like, cause sometimes it's, I got it and I know I got it, but I'm gonna be hesitant to the point to where the time passed me by. I don't want that to happen to me. You see what I'm saying? I wanna go get it. Like, this is my time, I gotta take it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I really don't believe in the fact that we young, we are young, I'm 22. And people in the industry have been telling me I'm young for the last, few years but there is a day to where I mean everybody time is different you feel me Jay-Z he blew up in the music later lucky day he blew up over 30 he was about 35 he's been in the industry for years and years and his time That's had just 90s. recently came you feel me man stop stop so, rapping and went back to the streets and then came back so it, it just depends everybody story is different but when I write mine I want it to be you know, he did it. He had it. He did it. We watched him. Like, because most people could say they watched me grow up. You know what I'm saying? You even seen, you probably was like, I didn't seen this dude since you was a, like, even a even though you was younger than me, yeah. you still could say, you know, dang, bro, I didn't seen you grow up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that story, I, I needed to, to say that he did it. So that's, that's my biggest motivation. And then I just, I, I enjoy discipline. Like, I, I enjoy getting up, you know, in the gym, I enjoy, you know, being healthy. I just want to be the best version of myself. And, you know, I got two little sisters as well. You know what I'm saying? And I think they superstars too. So I kind of want to set an example for them too. And, you know, just make my family proud. And, you know, really make myself proud. Definitely. No doubt. So how would you um, take care of that discipline at Clark? You know, just coming to Clark Atlanta, it's room to be not disciplined, <laughs> you know. If y'all don't know, the ratio is crazy. I'll just say that straight out. So, like, how was you handling that discipline? Coming from the north to the south where everything is popping and everybody's so, it seems like everybody's so nice, everybody's so welcoming. And yeah. Not everybody, but majority of people is, yeah. like, welcoming and stuff. So it's like... I mean, when I first came to college, I definitely... I lived a little bit, man. That was the best times. Like, my freshman year, I never forget it. I never seen so many pretty women in one room. I never seen nothing like that, just being a, a young a young boy from Cleveland. And you know, you're from the D. So we ain't never seen nothing like that. So when I came here, never of course. In, in yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> For real. But that, that changed me in the fact of I was able to experience it. And I definitely fell in love with it. I fell in love with the A. I fell in love with everything that it came, you know, came with. But it also taught me a few things. I didn't make some mistakes, you know, that I didn't learn from. But man, at the end of the day, you just gotta make a decision of how bad you want it. Do you wanna just use your twenties to have a good time and then kinda not have it figured out by the time you and your you know you in your thirties and you kind of time nah, is moving you, by. Nah, you gonna figure it out? I want I want to figure it out now so that I could Chill feel good. Days. You know what I'm saying? When it's time. Definitely. Yeah. Now we gonna um we gonna talk about the black man single. Okay. Is it called black man? So it's called change. Okay, change. So I think it was the month before February. Yeah, sometime around February, I got a call um, from my brother. His name is Juice Hitchens, Alex Hitchens. 
Um, he's a fire producer in Atlanta, and he works with Universal Music Group. Mm, and that's um, what he was telling me. Okay. Yeah, so he um, he called me on the phone. He like, Michael got an opportunity for you. He like, they got me working on this this Black History project, and uh, want to see if we could, you know, fly you out, write and record this record, and you know, if they like it, they would throw it on there. So they ended up actually using it for the project. It was called Power uh, to the People Three. Mm. Um, it's actually on Universal's platform right now. This is my first time doing like a record kind of not, or releasing a record that kind of wasn't about women or, you know, something like that. It was about something kind of bigger, you know what I'm saying? Powerful. Yeah, so Chains was definitely a special record. And uh, fun fact is I wrote it in like 30 minutes. I probably wrote it in 30 minutes. Like everything was coming so natural and so real. It was um, the beat. So it was the beat. the beat. It was the beat. And I just remember I just kept coming up with the cadences and adding words so smooth. I'm like, man, this is one of my best writing experiences. Just, it was refreshing. And the, probably the vibe. Yeah, like, the vibe was it. Out, you, you oh, it was every, oh, everything. I was yeah. in my back. Yeah, yeah, I was in my back. But it, it, was, it was a fun record to record. But also, it was a tough record to record. Because, you know, as black men, we go through so much, you know, dealing with police and enforcement. So I just had to really just, even sometimes with some of the lines, put myself in, you know, and even though I am a black man already, but putting myself in a black man in that situation, shoes, is is just tough to even think about, you know. Because, you know, the, your mom never went that call. Ever. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was, a, that was a good record, though. What would you say is some of your favorite, like, lines from there? I mean... Because I'm telling you, I have to say... When you did that song, when I tell you everybody leaving the the freaking um concert was uh I'm a black man. Mm-hmm. They are yeah. feeling it and and it's like it got stuck in people's head. Yeah. yeah. So what what would you say was your favorite lines or your favorite bar where you was like, ooh, that I mean definitely that's gonna, that's I mean gonna, that's gonna, Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean my my first one is, I mean, probably the second verse. Um, when I said, you know, my presence is a blessing, not aggressive. I'm more than what the media is suggesting. How can I even make an impression when the fact that I'm brown is their obsession? You see what I'm saying? Like, that's, like, that's, I that was some keen on that. But, yeah. But, 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 that, but, that, but that, that is just the truth. It's like, we are viewed as a threat as soon as we walk in the room. You know what I'm saying? Compared to the next you know, white guy that walk in the room or, you know, somebody else. We we already have a target on us no matter what. So, you know, how can I even make an impression when the fact that I'm brown, you already thinking about that. Everything that I'm saying out of my mouth doesn't even matter to you. And it depends how you dress. Like as soon as, as, soon yeah, as, soon as you as come you dress, in, yeah. they got oh he's tats, this. you know what I'm saying? All type of stuff. So they actually miss you and then yeah. watch this episode yeah. and be like, Oh, he's not a gang member. Yeah. yeah, my mama just got on me for this little hand that I got. This new new hands that I gotta say voice V uh I'm not dirt, but the voice. <laughs> I just got voice. She said on nothing on your fingers. Yeah, I mean she was just, you know, my parents, they're a little old school, so the, mm-hmm. the neck and the hand they always talked about. So Are oh, you got a neck tuck? No, I don't got no oh, neck. Oh, I was about no, to no, say, no, no, I didn't no. even notice. No, I don't, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I think if you do neck, you better have some stuff set yeah, up. Already, like, yeah, you better yeah, have yeah, a neck a little bag. Too crazy. Wait, you better have either the bag or the bag is like Right yeah. around the corner, cause yeah. once you get naked, it's, it's a yeah for corporate, yeah, it's over. It's over. Yeah, yeah, it's over. yeah, but I don't want to do nothing like that anyway, so it don't matter. I don't got no tattoos right now. Okay, and hey, we're gonna check. We're gonna do this interview again in two years. We're gonna see if you got some tattoos. I think I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be no. I think I'm gonna be a no tattoo. Cause I feel like by now I feel like I would have got some. Everybody yeah. get them in their twenties. If you're not yeah. itching, well, this is what I would say. Don't start. <laughs> yes, because once you start, start oh, yeah. let me finish. Ooh, this a look. Yeah, yeah. And then they no, you don't think addictive. about everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's what's up. Like, no, 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 no tattoos. But um, I want to elaborate more on what he was speaking about with, um, you know, just the whole stigma of just because you got the brown skin, you this. And I think it's very important that we change that narrative. Like, it's a group of black kids watching this, a group of black adults watching this, and for them to even have this platform to see two young black men that go to the same school now doing this and it's like coming from the city we from it's not normal it's very rare so i think it's just important that like 
you be different, you be very distinct, and you really own up to yourself. Like, take over the world. Like, do your dreams. Like, definitely just listen to your voice. Like, your inner voice is telling you, go here, do this, or get out of bed, do this. And Facts. you got to start listening to your inner voice and start being a leader because once you lead, people will follow. And the thing with leading is you can lead positively or negatively. Facts. So the negative leader, just because you're a leader at heart, you're not realizing it, but you're going to do this, do this and that. They following you too, and they on that because they think, they like, well, he making it work. I, I can do it too. Right. But we got to start. We should have, well, we, we have started, but the black culture really has to just lock in with themselves and realize like how all this nonsense is pure ignorance. Yeah. And... We really just got to lock in with ourselves, focus in, and just live through our purpose, like our purpose in life. Like we Facts. here for a reason, and once you find that out, just drive it and drive it and continue to be a leader and basically cut out everything that's not in that purpose. Yeah. So my question to you is, <clears throat> as you're getting older, how important is it to you? How important it is to you? For the youth to follow after you and follow those footsteps and you leaving a blueprint for people to yeah, follow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm still, we still young, so, I mean, we, we growing now, but um, definitely for the youth, definitely just tap in and live life, but just be mindful of who, who you're around. The company you keep matters, I will say that. Um, I've been blessed to have good company around me throughout the years. I've learned so many different things from different groups of friends. I I was one of those dudes that any of your friends will tell, any of my friends will tell you that oh Malk he got different groups of friends for different things. But I'm learning in all different aspects from the groups. You know what I'm saying? I make sure that it's nothing negative coming from those groups, and if there is to kind of disassociate, disassociate yourself, you know what I'm saying? So that's definitely what I would say. Just definitely be mindful of who you who you hanging, hanging with. Be mindful who you listening to, what you listening to, and just, you know, just stay locked in and, and know your real goals and follow those because that's all that matters at the end of the day because nobody going to be with you when it's just you. No. Nah. Nobody care about your stuff like you do. And that's what I always say. So so when you said be careful with those who are around you. Yeah. If you got certain people in the studio with you, you think that affects your music? Of course. It does. Or it would affect, it affects your focus. It won't necessarily affect the music. Or well, it could. Because me personally, I like closed sessions for real. Like I like sessions with just... Yeah, so what's your studio vibe? Um... Closed sessions, so it's like me and a producer, um, maybe me as a writer, maybe another another writer, and you know, if it's somebody real cool or close with me, they could kick it and, and just listen and just vibe. But I don't like the everybody blurting out what should happen and stuff like that because I feel like that's kind of just when an artist is painting, you don't say, "No, actually, uh, can you swipe it that way?" Or, or, or actually, can you put that part brown? You're not doing that. You're just watching you enjoy. You're watching you enjoy. I never thought of that. Yeah, so that's, that's, it's art at the end of the day. Now, sometimes if there is a record where it's like, I'll bring somebody in. Like, what do you think about this? You know, conceptually, do it make sense? Do this sing well? Like, and honestly, I was in Los Angeles. And when I was in Los Angeles uh, for a little while, um, it taught me a lot about writing. It taught me a lot about um, just just writing, period. You know what I'm saying? Just does this make sense, you know? like So that was kind of like a big thing that I learned there. I became a better writer when I, when I was in L.A. for a little bit. So was it like... Instead of saying money, you say bag or something like that. Like just yeah, just any words yeah, or... just anything. Like 
the flavor of, of, of your writing? Do it make sense? Do it sing well? Because certain things, certain words literally don't sing well. Like, you can say something, but you can't sing it. Like, so it's just finding the best words to tell the story. And storytelling is everything. Because people want to be able to relate to music. But I'm at a stage to where I want to write about my story. You see what I'm saying? So Freestyle at all when you uh, make music? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, like, I, I do it, like... Even when I'm in, in the car with the homies, we're yeah, freestyle. Yeah. But it's just, it, to me, it's all practice. It, to me, it's all sharpening your skills. So, so you, any type of music, anything, just sharpening your skills. So when you freestyle, do you sing or do you rap? Both. Okay. You feel me? One day, I, one of my things I want to do is, shit, I want to go on, uh, as soon as I get as lit as I, as I need to be, I'm, I'm going to do LA Leakers. I'm, I'm going to do it, LA but, I, but niggas going to think I'm going to come in. Sing on that bitch. But you a rap. And I'm going to rap. Yeah. yeah. And I want to show that world that side. You know what I'm saying? But I got to. So you don't think you could drop a couple little rap? I know you got some little, you know, no auto songs. Not yet, say. man. Not yet. But the time going to come, though, for sure. Definitely. How you um feel about music videos? Like, how is your, um, with music videos, what kind of concepts do you like to go for? Um, so my favorite, one of my favorite directors, um, on the music video side, um, is Tiana Taylor. She direct all her videos and I think her concepts be hard. Um, I kind of want to be like that as far as, um, just telling whatever the story, um, is the song. And I try to use as the least models as possible. And I I like to bring, I know a lot of people. So I like to bring my people in. Like, I know a lot of folks that just want to be involved. Mm. So I bring them in and just get them involved because I feel like it makes it more real, you know, and then it, it just make it more of a fun experience, like on set. Um, I shot a video um, in 2020 uh, to a record I got called Playlist. Um, and it, it, was, it was a fire experience. I brought a few of my people in down to Atlanta and... Um, it was a part of the video, part of the process. So moving forward, um, you know, wrapping things up. Yep, yep. What, what do the viewers need to know about you now? Like what you own now, which, what you going for? Like yeah. the goals, this, the rest of the year, you know. Yeah. This so, is that time where it's getting hot outside. So it's yeah. like all that good energy and motion is coming. So it's like this is time to capitalize. It's definitely time. So I just, I want to drop my first project. Uh, I've dropped singles throughout the duration of my career so far. I dropped about five to six singles, but I never dropped an EP before. I never dropped an album before. So, and I got a vault. I got a vault of records that's, that's, that I believe in, but I just want to make sure it's packaged right. I want to make sure that it's telling my story. I want to make sure that it's, it's really just a real debut for who I am, you know, now. So that's coming soon. You got a title for it? And more content. I, I, I don't have a time for it. I, I, mean, I don't have a uh, title for it, but I'm thinking on one. I'm thinking on one right now. Yeah. Man, it must be fired. You see it in his eyes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's going to be serious. And, and, and expect more content from me. Expect me to be more active on socials. Uh, expect for me to just, you know, I want to let people into the side of, you know, what it is to be an artist that is sometimes uninspired, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes not always movement coming not always fast. Motivated. Not always motivated, you know what I'm saying? Like, even I, I just posted a, a video, I did a little remix to Scissors, a new record called Snoo- well, Snooze. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just, you know, I was pretty much saying, like, kind of I've been feeling a little uninspired lately. i kind of been feeling like I wasn't, you know, moving enough. Like, I wasn't working hard enough on the music side. And um, a lot of artists get to that point because you're trying to handle everything else that's going on in life. You know what I'm saying? And you kind of, you losing some of the way you feel. You know what I'm saying? So 
just writing that was refreshing. And I was like, yeah, this is just a letter of, you know, encouragement for artists that's feeling that way. So I just definitely want to get more vulnerable and just get more open and just uh, letting more people into my life and just showing them that not everything perfect. It ain't always, oh, mouth out, kicking it in the club, celebrity, all of mm-hmm. these things. Like, it ain't all... It ain't all like that. Like, and I say one of the realest lines I heard is this artist named Friday. He did the God Did, mm-hmm. um, the hook on God Did. He got a song. He was like, I was chasing my dreams on an empty stomach. I was standing in VIP while rent was due. Like, that's really been me before. <laughs> like, I was like, that's literally, I'm like backstage with the Drake concert. Everybody, you feeling like that nigga. And then the next moment, you like, damn. You go back home, you like, bro, I'm not even living that, for real. Like, it's cool, but, like, people been telling me, like, keep going, and they ain't even hearing my shit. They not even hearing me, seeing me. So it's like, that's that's a real part of the artist shit, too. Like, it ain't all, like, glitz and glamour, too, so. It's definitely a grind. It's, it's whatever uh, yeah. happening darks come to light. So no as long as you, you know, staying true, staying motivated, and just, you know, Choosing the process over the outcome because yeah. you don't know when that outcome can come. Facts. Only God knows. So just yeah. going through with that process, it's going to work out. Yeah. That's how oh, I always yeah. do it. No doubt. No doubt. And I've been in the crock pot, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I didn't see so much. I didn't, I didn't uh, watch some people go, watch some people fall, watch some people pass me, watch some people fall. Like everything. I didn't see it all. So it's like, now I'm like, when I when I when I get on this, it's over. It's over. It's over, dog. And y'all heard it here first on the interview podcast. The interview man, this is like, it's crazy because we manifesting it right now. So yeah, they gonna see this saying. and then they gonna see the outcome and be like, yeah. uh, I guess I guess Malcolm told told us. Yeah. But I definitely appreciate you for taking your time My out dog. getting this interview. Man. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a special special episode. Everybody in AUC, y'all better watch this. Everybody Tap in, in Cleveland, Detroit. Everybody worldwide, Cali, everywhere. Um, you can find all his socials. Is it Malk? Um, got next everywhere. Malk up, Malk up next. Yeah. Okay. So at Malk up next, M A L C U P N E X T. I'm on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok too. M A L C U P N E X T. And on uh, on Apple Music, Malcolm. So we we coming. All his links will be in the description. And remember, don't let them sing to your girl because. <laughs> She might be gone. If if you've seen the happy birthday to her on her 21st, she might not be going home with <laughs> who, who she came with. But um, that's Malcolm. Once again, subscribe to the interview. Like, comment, and subscribe. New episodes coming. And just keep living right, y'all. I'll see y'all again next week, though. All right. Appreciate y'all.